Welcome, welcome to the Sharpway Show. It is a little bit after 7 p.m. on the East Coast. And yes, I am here, Larry Sharp, trying to give you, I hope, an interesting show with some nice ideas and cool stuff in general. Now, if you think that I usually give you cool stuff, that's awesome. If you do, then do me a favor, like, comment, share. I say it every time, but it is critical that you do so. The more you do that, the more people will see this, the more people will care. And even if you say, Larry, you don't usually give me good stuff. Okay. But you think, I don't know, I'm handsome or something. I mean, I am handsome, but whatever you might think, click the like button anyway, just cause and scroll on because whatever, you just want to help out. It does matter. So the liking and the commenting and sharing is critical. If you can do it, it's awesome. So why in the world would I want to have a conversation um, regarding South by Southwest? Some of you may know it as a SX, right? X, S, X, S, X, S, W. There we go. Yes. Um, why would I, why would you care about that? And why would I care about that and music or any of those things? And there is a reason why it matters. Some of you notice that if you're trying to not be mainstream, right? If you're trying to not run as a mainstream Democrat or Republican or follow the mainstream media, any of those things, you get pushed out of a lot. It's difficult to get your message out in any type of mainstream media. And even now worse, the shadow banning that you see many of us get on Facebook and, and uh, YouTube and it's just embarrassingly bad, right? I mean, you, you can see what happens. That's why I have to stream this on eight different platforms because I can't do it on one. I do it on one. I'll get 100 views on one or 200 views on one. I do it on eight I can get thousands of views on eight and then hopefully enough shares and likes, we can have some serious views. It's just no way I could do it on one anymore. So, okay, you're talking trash, Larry. I am. Why does that matter? Because it means I have to find other ways of getting our name out, which means niche media, which means things that I normally wouldn't be able to get involved with. And the good and the bad of this, the good for me is that I'm able to go to places like South by Southwest that, that's generally more music or maybe pop culture, usually thought of that way, maybe a little bit techie, maybe, but usually much more entertainment. That's kind of what they've been for a long time. But now I have an opportunity to speak there. And those of you may or may not know, I'll be speaking there. Yes, duopoly, breaking the duopoly, can uh, third parties win? And I'm not going to tell you the answer to that question unless you go there or watch it later, here, uh, coming up here this Sunday um, at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. I will be speaking there. And so will the man, the myth, the legend himself, Spike Cohen. He will also be speaking there too. We'll be talking about those issues. So good for me in that almost everything's become political. Good for me. Bad for everybody else. I mean, you now can't go to a music festival without it being political, right? I mean, every place you go has politics. So that's probably bad for us as a, as a nation, but good for me personally, because at least I get to get around all this stuff and be in front of literally, you know, maybe a hundred or 200,000 people. Lots of people will be there, large stages, large events, lots of people seeing what I have to say. And hopefully, I hope converting a little bit, you know, to hear what we have to say. So th that's why we're doing that kind of thing. It is a great idea to get our name out. It's a great idea for people to hear what we're trying uh, to, to, what we're trying to get at is to get people to see what we're trying, how we're trying to change. And sadly, mainstream media very rarely, very rarely does that. Almost always what mainstream media winds up doing is pushing us out. So we've got to find other ways. So uh, I will be there uh, Sunday. So will the man himself, Spike Cohen. And I know some of you are like, Larry, I love you, but I tuned in here for Spike. He's way cooler than you. Well, first off, you're wrong, but that's okay. You can think that if you want, because I am super cool. But I'm going to use my magic powers and I'm going to bring him in. So here we go. I summon... The man himself, the reigning, defending, LPVP champion of the world, Spike Cohen. Oh my God! I no one, no one said that you were that I was cooler than you. That didn't happen. That's not real. Hey, Larry, thanks for having me on, man. 
No, I am so happy that you are here. I appreciate it. As you probably heard, I was just talking about the idea that we have to use these other venues Yes. To get around the mainstream media so that people yep. can hear us in places that they normally wouldn't hear us. I mean, exactly. I'm sure you're on the same page here. Absolutely. That's why, uh, and I, I've said this before, when I was first asked to, uh, to join you on this panel at South by Southwest, my first thought is, I don't care what you're asking me, I'm not dropping my mixtape. But it turns out South by Southwest is so much bigger of a thing than music. I didn't know. And then it turns right. out uh, Facebook was launched on South by Southwest. Many people's political careers were launched on South by Southwest, hoping to get this guy, uh, his gubernatorial campaign uh, successfully launched uh, at South by Southwest. And uh, it, it turns out this is a place where uh, people who are open to what the new thing is come from right. around the world to see. And we're going to present that. The new thing is breaking this you know, uh, red and blue, uh, di uh, endless dichotomy that we have to choose between and giving voters better alternatives to choose from than the same red and blue alternatives of uh, red and blue abominations they've been given over the past several decades. Yeah. Well, you've been talking about this for a while, right? Your whole idea of you are the power yep. means you have to be able to have people to vote for so you can use your power, right? If this, exactly. if the system and, and I'll bring up New York state, Obviously, I'm biased here, but just mm -hmm. to make sure, the idea of New York State now and other states are the same. In New York State, with such a one-party system, right, yep. where it's the Democrats control everything, you go to Oklahoma, the Republicans control everything, right? So, But yes. in my state, the Democrats control everything so that when there's no primaries in the Democratic Party, literally there is no power. So the yep. party elites decide who they want to put on, on top. They put that person on top. And that person is our new monarch. Exactly. Wow. We've got exactly. to fix this, right? I mean, this exactly. is what you say, isn't it? Yeah. And I live in South Carolina, which is the, you'd say the opposite, but really it's just the mirror image where the Republicans are in control of anything, save a couple of little gerrymandered uh, areas. For the most part, it's the Republicans decide who your candidate is, and you don't have anyone else to vote for, except for the presidential ticket and sometimes uh, someone running against uh, the congressional ticket in our district. In my district, there is no one else except Republicans that are, are running in these races. And the thing is, you are the power means that you have the power to stop this. Once we come together and recognize we don't have to vote for these folks, there's that meme that goes around and it shows that there's this uh, a board that's going out over a cliff. And at the edge mm -hmm. of the board over the cliff is someone on, a, on a, a podium yelling at everyone and telling them what to do. And the people standing there listening to this person yelling at them are what are keeping that board up and keeping that person from falling down off the cliff and more it shows more and more people realizing they're the ones holding this up and they're walking away that's what we need we need people to realize they are what are allowing this to happen and that they can walk away from it they can choose not to vote this way they can realize that republicans and democrats have been playing an endless bad cop good cop routine against them they're both the bad cop and at the end of the day, we need to stop doing this and we need to fight for better alternatives, vote for those alternatives and take back the power that's been stolen from us. I love that. They're both the bad cop. I'm so going to steal that and give you absolutely no credit whatsoever. <laughs> None so, at so, all. <laughs> yes, at all. that's awesome. So they're both the bad cop. I like that. For those of you who are interested in saying this Spike Cohen guy seems cool, but I've been living under a rock and I don't know who he is. OK, I'm glad you're out from under your rock. Head on yes. over to SpikeCohen.com to see what he's doing. That would be awesome. Yes. Go do that. Say hi. Click on all his cool stuff because he's got lots of cool stuff going on. Yep. Muddy Waters. He's got his podcast. He's all over the place visiting, saying hi to people. So go say hi to him. Use my name so he'll feel bad and act like he owes me. That will be awesome. Yes. So do that. And we're going to be going there. But with other people, too, from a group called Liberty Live. If you want to check yes. out what's going on there, head over to libertylive.us. And be forward, they were instrumental in making this happen. Did they reach out to you first or me first? Probably you first, right? I honestly don't know what the order was. I think that it, they reached out to both of us at the same time because when they talked to me, they said that they were looking at, at that they were going to have Larry Sharp there as well. So I think we were both asked at the same time, which would make sense because uh, I don't think that either one of us is cooler than the other. And I think that's actually we're both equally cool in our own Got respective it. ways. Um, so, no, I Got think it. they reached out at the same time, but it was 
as soon as I knew just how in depth and how big of a deal this was, this is the biggest one of the biggest events that happens in Texas. This the mm -hmm. the the amount of people that come, the amount of tension this gets uh, around the world, and the amount of money this draws in is comparable right. to like the Super Bowl. And uh, right. it's just it's incredible. Like this is a really really big deal. This is one of the first times that we're going to have. Uh, third party candidates talking to people who are there specifically to hear what the new thing is. The new thing is freedom and liberty. Absolutely. And I'm going there specifically talking about um, the advocates for self-government, which, you know, I yep. support 100 percent. And they support the show with their one of their newest websites, libertarianism.com. So for those of you who care about that, look, when you're listening to guys like me and Spike, you get motivated and you go, wow, I want to be a libertarian now. And that's great. That's great. Yes. You should feel that. Yes. But then what do you do next? Well, you go to libertarianism.com and then take their quizzes and tests so you can learn what it is to be a libertarian, which is heavily about helping people become happy. And that sounds nutty, but libertarianism.com gets that, right? And they sponsor the show. There is There are cool merch. There's cool merch there if you want to buy like cool t-shirts and stuff. You don't have to buy it though. If you want to, you go there, take the classes, you get a bunch of points and you can buy the cool merch with points. It's free. Look at that. So do Free. that, click that specific link because that makes me look good and I want to look good so they keep sponsoring the show. So if you've already gone there, do me a favor, copy that link right there and then share it on your social media so others will go. Not a bad deal if you ask me, not a bad deal at all. So deal. Uh, you really have brought this point that it's a big show. Isn't there like 100,000 people there or something like that? They're expecting between 100 and 130,000 people at this event this year. This is wow. this is gigantic. This is a, I I know I keep saying this is a really big deal, but this is a really big deal. This and it's and importantly, it is an audience that often hasn't heard of libertarianism or of our ideas Correct. from us. They've heard all the straw men about <laughs> us. They've heard people who claim to be libertarian who are no such thing. They claim to be, be people who understand libertarianism who certainly do not the way that they're talking about it. They've not heard from actual libertarians about what our ideals are and what we propose to break us free from the duopoly. This is an, an incredible opportunity. I could not be more happy to be a part of it. I could not be even more happy to know that you're going to be my partner in doing this and that we are going going to be telling everyone about the bro code and yes that's, that's going to be when the bro code comes into play i don't play. call it bro code that was lauren that wasn't me i just i call it the program right oh, bro program is better okay that's fair that program the program the bro program. code the bro yes. way with larry sharp I don't care what whatever it's called, as long as we're calling it bro, because that's we we we're go. talking about calling it robe. That didn't seem to work as well. No. We're calling it bro no. with a silent E. It's going to work amazingly. And it is once people know that ballot reform uh, and uh, ranked choice voting and open primaries allow for us not to fall into this lesser evil nonsense yes. we've been told for the past several decades. It opens it up to everything. Now we can actually choose who we want to be in that particular office, not just who we think has the best chance of beating the one we hate the most. That's what's right. gotten us here, and it's never going to get us out of it. The, the issue that I bring up often is the value of ranked choice voting is if most people don't want to vote for a third party because they're afraid the other guy is going to win, it's a wasted vote, right? But with ranked choice voting, for those who don't know, you rank your vote. So if yep. you're a Republican in South Carolina and you're scared of Democrats or you're a Democrat in New York and you're scared of Republicans, whatever the issue is, you vote for, you know, a libertarian first or green party, libertarian or whatever, or yeah. whatever, libertarian or whatever you vote for someone. And then you vote for your guy or gal who you're, you know, your defensive vote is the second vote, not the first. If the first person you vote for wins, life is good. You got the person you actually want. If they don't win, your vote goes to your defensive vote anyway. Exactly. So there is no loss. You're safe in doing your vote. But most importantly, and I would say this, I look at this from uh, the, the one person who got the most votes ever in the presidential election was Gary Johnson for us, right? In 2016. Yep. 2012, not as much. 2016, he did, a, he did the, the biggest. Yep. Imagine if we had ranked choice voting across the nation and we would have seen what his actual first round would have been, yep. right? His final was about 3%. But imagine if his first round would have been, say, 15% or something. And yep. then people went to their second choice and it went to, you know, say, 3 or something. But if it started at 15%, that would have told Democrats and Republicans, wow, we have to change. 
there's a significant number of people who thought Gary Johnson was the right you know, choice. We have to change. You will get better Republicans and better Democrats, even if we lose with ranked choice voting, right? Yeah. You still get better people. Yeah. And it also allows them not to just dismiss us. So if there is ranked choice voting and a Republican or Democrat is asked about us, if they just say, oh, well, they're not going to win. Well, that doesn't actually matter anymore. It's not an issue of saying, oh, they're not going to win. We shouldn't talk about them. They're still anyone can vote for them, safely vote for them and know that even if we don't win, that whoever they think is the lesser evil in this endless good cop, bad cop routine uh, can still win. So it doesn't mean anything anymore to just say, oh, they can't win isn't a isn't a compelling reason to dismiss our ideas. And and voters will recognize that it's not a compelling reason to dismiss our ideas. And they'll say, OK, great, they can't win. What is it you think about their policies? Because I'm considering voting for them as number one instead of you. And that changes everything. It does. And the other thing it does also is if you have multiple parties with ballot access, parties can actually work together. Yes. And you see it, right? So someone say, say if, if I lean left or I lean right, then I might be a libertarian. But I say, if if not me, then this. Well, the other one yeah. might say the same thing. If not, if not Larry, then me, right? You have a yes. bunch of those going back and forth where now the negative campaigning isn't as effective. Exactly. And so it'll stop, not because they care. They don't. It'll stop because it doesn't work anymore, right? Doesn't if, work. If I'm, if I'm yelling you know, other guy bad. And they go, well, yeah, but now you're both bad. I guess I'm voting for Spike now. Well, I just lost, right? I was trying to make them vote for me. So it will begin to stop just because it, it won't work anymore. So it ends the negative campaigning. But something else, it forces us to have actual policies. Yeah. That's a critical thing. I mean, I know you, you're, you're on board with this, obviously. A hundred percent. If it, imagine, because we talk about, you know, a third party, in an environment with open primaries, uh, more universal or at least greatly uh, liberated ballot access and ranked choice voting, you could have eight or nine or 10 people uh, viably running for the same office. All of them would have different ideas. And you could say, oh, well, this guy's ideas sound the best. And this lady's ideas sound second best. And this person's ideas third best. And you could rank it like that. It actually makes it about what they're proposing instead yeah. of this, this weird reverse popularity contest where you have to choose which person you hate marginally less than the other one, which one's lies you think sound a little bit better than the other one's lies. You know, they're both lying. You're not going to get anything you want, but at least this one's lies, what they're saying they're going to do, but will never do sounds a little bit better than what this person says that they'll do, but will never actually do. It changes it where now you're voting based on what people want to do and what you believe they're going to do. And the old lies and, and the, the ways of doing that, it's not going to work anymore. People right. aren't going to care about which one is marginally better because they can rank from one to you know 15 or however many people are on there, which one they like the most. It changes the way people will have to run. It changes the way people will have to message. It changes the way people will have to reach out to people in different communities. It changes everything in a positive way. It uh, liberates the ability of the voter to effectively make the choice that they want. It is the it is freedom applied to the ballot box. And it, it, it also creates real polling. What I mean by yes. that is, now you're going to have specialized parties, right? Like when in New York, we used to have Jimmy, Jimmy McMillan's The Rent is Too Damn High party, yes. right? So when you have a party like that, if if Jimmy gets 10% or 13% of the first round voting, he knows he's not going to win. But 13% says people do care the rent's too damn high. No matter This is who what wins, resonated with me the most. Exactly. Yeah. I got to deal with the rent. But yep. maybe he's talking a bunch of trash and it seems like people care. But then he gets 1% in the general election first round, which means people don't think the rent's too damn high, right? Yeah. So yeah. you now know what the people actually think by specialized parties. And in New York State, imagine if we had a Second Amendment party. Yeah, We would know, is New York State as pro or anti-gun as we think it actually is? We would know for sure. Do they exactly. get 1%? Do they get 30% in the first round, right? In New York State, the Second Amendment Party is not going to win the election. I get it. However, however, we'll know what that is. And now other people have to go, you know what? I got to take the Second Amendment more seriously. Or yeah. I got to care about the rent. Or I've got to care about insert single issue that matters, right? That's mm -hmm. a critical piece. So yeah. I, think that, I think that's amazing. So do you want to tell the people if third parties can win? Or do you want to wait and have them find out on Sunday? No, we can't tell. No, we made that mistake. 
on my live version of my show. Oh, it has been tell them to go check entirely. it out now. Uh, yes, good. yes, no, because <laughs> yes. The, the, the title is, uh, I believe, Breaking the Duopoly, Can Third Parties Succeed? And, mm -hmm. I, and I'd set a spoiler alert on whether or not we could succeed, but I won't say it again, and you'll never know. You're not going to believe what the answer is. You have to come uh, to the Hilton Salon C in Austin, Texas, uh, on 2.30 p.m. Central Time, local time in Texas, uh, on Sunday, March 13th, for uh, me and Larry, and I don't, I forget the, the other person's name that I know of who's with Working Families Lauren Party. Lauren No, that Warren Postler is uh, is Liberty Live, but the, the Working Families candidate, I'm trying to remember. Oh, um, yes, her. and Working Families is there too. That's right, yep. yes. Working Families um, is there as but well. But her name is, is on the link, which I did put yes. in the description. Go yes. to the description, uh, click the link. The link is there. You can see everybody who's there. All good, yes. all there, absolutely. And we can't yes. tell you who, what's going to happen. We cannot tell you. We are contractually obligated by a social contract. You know how important those are. A social Critical. contract that we will not uh, discuss prior to our event at South by Southwest, whether or not third parties will prevail. And if you think based on the things we've said in the past, if we know that if, what, if you know whether or not we think third parties will prevail, you could be shocked. You could be in for the biggest shock of your life. And you'll only Maybe. know if you attend South by Southwest or if you're not attending, if you don't have a South by Southwest badge, we will be at the Midwest House, uh, which is one of the houses being sponsored by South by Southwest later on that evening on Sunday, March the 13th. And then we might, we might, just then we might tell you whether or not we think third parties Probably can not. succeed. We might not, though. Probably. We might not. <laughs> yeah, you might have to go. But maybe, maybe. You're going to have you, to go. If you're nice you're to, to us. Go. Probably. You might or might. It, I can't. We can't say. It is about music. So I do want to take a comment. Um, Brown Mamba says, what kind of music do you listen to, Larry? I'm going to bring it to you, too, Spike. So what kind of music do you listen to? I am a rap guy. I listen to mostly 90s and early 2000s rap, some reggae, some R&B. There's not really anything I don't like, but that's definitely the, the mu main music that I listen to. It's odd. I like two types of music generally. Very soft and very hard. Those are my types. I, I like like Chardet and Ice Cube. Like totally. Out and I also happen because I speak a little German. I also like German rap too, which is crazy. I know it sounds odd. Oh, wow. I like that also. Yes. And a little which bit Which I would metal. imagine sounds, that would sound very angry, I would think. like It just, is. Even if they're not mad, it would just sound angry, right? It does. <laughs> yes, absolutely does. <laughs> yes. So yes. Yeah. So that too. Yes. Yeah. So I, I like all the most types. And believe it or not, when I grew up, I had a, a very deep uh, emo phase. So I like The Cure, believe it or not. I grew up in the 80s. So yes. Yeah. So like, so I have some of that too in there. So I've got... Yes, a very crazy idea where I can listen oh, to the cure. I'm trying to picture emo Larry Sharp. Oh wow. Yes. And then uh and then uh and then Ice Cube and then Sade and then German yes. rap and yeah, and, and the then cure. a little bit of Rammstein. So yeah, it's it's a it's an eclectic group of uh of uh, yes. of music. Anyway, if you so, yes. come to the South by Southwest panel, we will have a poster sized photo of Larry Sharp during his emo phase. I love that. Yes. I'm going to put on like the black uh, eyeliner yeah. and yeah. I'll put like a, a a a wig on with the black hair. Yeah, do the whole yes. deal. The whole the deal whole thing. that will happen. Whole deal. Absolutely. So yes. Um, David says he's watching on YouTube and on Roku. Thank you so much. Hello. I appreciate that. Our Roku channel. For those of you who are paying attention to our Roku channel, we're trying, as I mentioned earlier, to get around all these uh, all the banning that I get, shadow banning I get. I've got to be on eight different things yes. to include our Roku channel. So thank you so much for supporting that, David. I do appreciate it tremendously. So we are talking also about um, signatures, petitions. This goes back to our ballot access piece we've been talking about, right? Yep. Now, what we've been doing, and the reason why it's so personal for me, and I'm so glad you're, you're behind me on this, Spike, tremendously, because I have to get on my ballot. I have to actually get 45,000 signatures across New York State. So the team is actively out asking people to pledge how many signatures they could actually get. And Rebecca has pledged 50. That's amazing, Rebecca. Thank That's you. That's fantastic. So we're Thank actually you, out there doing that. People are promising 100, 200, whatever the case may be. They are bouncing back and forth. So I am very happy that we're doing that. So this is the thing about ballot access, right? I mean, it, imagine if we don't get 50 state ballot access, Mike. I mean, what are we talking about? That would be just horrible, right? Yeah. The one terrible. thing that we, the, what the Libertarian Party has demonstrated in the last couple of election cycles is we're the only party that right now has the wherewithal to actually 
uh, I guess for lack of a better word, earn our way or fight for our way yes. onto all 50 state ballots. Republicans and Democrats get on it automatically. No one else was able to actually be able to get on the more than I think uh, 33 or 34 states the Green Party was able to get on. And we even fought, uh, our legal team fought to help them uh, remain on some of the state ballots to be able to have more than just two or even three choices, to have as many choices as possible. It is crucial that we be able to be on the ballot. Not, And this isn't for the Libertarian Party. Yes, selfishly as a Libertarian, I want us on. I want Larry on. I want whoever we have running in 24 for president and all the way down the ballot. I want them to be able to be on with that L next to their name. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about that. It is mostly about voters, the people, the American people being able to have the choice to be able to decide who they want to run for office. It, the idea behind government is that it has the consent of the governed. And before we get into a whole rant on whether that's even a real thing or not, no one can argue that they have the consent of the governed if they're not even allowed to choose who they want to actually be in those positions. If they're given two choices that they hate and they're told, oh, you only have to choose, you can only choose between these two choices, you know, or you can write someone in, but that's a waste of time. Uh, the only real people that have any chance of winning are these two people you have to pick. Then you cannot argue that you have consent of the governed. That's absolutely. dictatorship with extra steps, and that needs to end. Completely agree. Yes, absolutely. Brian says, my personal page is currently being shadow banned primarily for posts that I found on Facebook and reposted years ago. The story that broke the camel's back was when I used the proper word for a female dog. Well, Brian, yeah, you're being mean. I'm kidding. So, so no, I'm, I'm kidding. But I, I hear that constantly. Spike, are you having that problem on any of your social media? Do you find yourself being, you know, turn, tuned down or any of those things? I... Not on my personal social media, but on Muddied Waters Media, which everyone watching this should follow, Muddy Waters Media. Uh, on Muddied Waters Media, uh, we have definitely seen that in spurts. My personal account right now actually has a restriction because uh, four years ago, I shared a meme that referenced someone eating bugs or something like that. Or, or said that someone, uh, something about eating bugs. And it wasn't even saying that someone should eat bugs. It was saying that this could, it jokingly said this could refer to someone eating bugs. That was ruled hate speech, again, four years ago. And so I was recently given a 30 day, what they call a restriction, where it said that oh, my yes. post will go much lower on people's algorithm. Now, I'm almost never on my personal Facebook, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but uh, Muddy Waters Media routinely gets banned uh, or shadow banned or yep. restricted uh, uh, hate speech, all of these things. And none of them are actual hate speech. Correct. None of them none is of actual them. misinformation. None of it yes. is any of that. It's literally just, we didn't like what you posted or the robot was told by enough people Correct. that it was bad and we have no interest in revisiting this. So you've got this, you know, mark of shame on you. It's, it's ridiculous. It, it, it is horrible. A hundred percent. Um, but Dixie is a little bit upset. Um, Dixie tuned in for Tasha. Sorry about that. Yeah. Lots of people do that, and then they get Spike instead. I, yeah. They get me instead. <laughs> That's what she happens. doesn't do podcasts. She doesn't do podcasts. She doesn't do uh, interviews. She doesn't do any of that. If yes. you want to see Tasha, you have to find out what event she's coming to with me, and you have to go and talk to her. So she's a very that's, that's you know I, this is my theory by the way. It's not that they actually like Tasha more than me, or that she's actually more attractive than me. I think what it really is is that she's more scarce than me. Like it's really oh, hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's a scarcity thing. I've been pricing myself uh, way too far into the market. I've been making yep. myself wait. There's a glut of Spike, and there's a very there's a there's a there's a shortage of Tasha. And so that's you know, what it like, is. Oh, we can see Spike anytime we want. He's on the sharp way every other week. He's on his own show twice a week. You know, he's, he's everywhere. You can see him anytime, but Tasha, you have to see to every, maybe once every couple months, she comes out to an event with spike. And if you go up to her, she'll talk to you, but you gotta, you gotta wait behind all the other people who are waiting to talk to <laughs> right. Tasha because, right. you know, but spikes right there. Hey, you want to talk to me? No, no, you're good. <laughs> but wait, I'm, I'm getting in line. So uh, incidentally, side note here, I'm at the Pennsylvania convention this past weekend, the love fest that that was. And they had a, a panel there. It was love fest in Pennsylvania. Yes. That's what I call it, the Pennsylvania love fest. And they had mm -hmm. a panel there about messaging. And Sam Robb, who's with the Pennsylvania Libertarian Party, he's talking about messaging. And he says, in fact, there's someone in this room right now who personifies everything that I talk about when I talk about the kind of messaging that we need in the liberty movement. And I'm, you know, preparing myself and about getting ready to stand up, got my seat back so I don't, you know, knock every, anything over the Tasha Cohen. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. And so I have to stand there while that happens. And everyone's <laughs> looking at me and I'm like, 
<laughs> like, and I'm trying to make eye contact with Sam, like, really? <laughs> and good. and ever she's that, and she's waving, and everything. Oh, Tash is the best messenger <laughs> in the Libertarian Party. And I'm like, you've never. And some of you haven't heard her talk. Scarcity. Correct. It scarcity. is. You're right. Speaking of scarcity, I'm about to bring somebody on who hardly yes. is ever on. I, we hardly ever see his face. Ever. This is a guy who's behind the scenes, moving and shaking, making stuff man. happen. He, uh, in theory, who sorry, who takes credit for moving and shaking and making things happen, even if he doesn't do it. The man himself, Brian Lambrick. How are you, sir? Hello, gentlemen. How are you guys doing tonight? What's going on? We're doing Good, well. Brian. How are you doing, man? I wanted to jump on board. You guys are promoting the event, and I thought I would just add a little bit of detail to everybody who's watching this, because we probably got a lot of libertarians, a lot of liberty lovers hanging around in Texas. They're in the Austin area, right? Ron Paul is how far away from there? About a two, three-hour drive. And I was looking at it, and I realized that for people who don't know, they've got two options to see Spike and Larry on Sunday. Uh, the first one, of course, is South by Southwest. And how do people get tickets for South by Southwest? Do you guys know how to do that? I do. This, this, South by South. This, this this is why I stole the link out of the calendar and came over here because I'm like, you yes. know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I've got this. I come prepared. I've got notes. I love Anybody it. watching this right now can go to SouthbySouthwest.com. S X S W. Wow, S X S W. <laughs> it's like, can you do that? The S and then the nice. SouthbySouthwest.com, nice. and then you click conferences, sessions, and Sunday. And you scroll down at 2.30 in the afternoon and you can click it. You can register. You can get a ticket and you won't miss this. But you got to find yeah. it because when you guys are saying this thing is huge, I mean, there's like 30 events going on at the same time every hour of every time of every day. So, guys, watching this, go to sxsw.com. S x s w dot com go to conference sessions sunday and you're gonna find them and and what's the title of this event called again breaking the duopoly can third parties prevail and we won't we're not going to tell you if they can yet yeah and, you and go there you gotta go there. and there's, there's going to be a place people can catch you later at night around seven o'clock seven thirty the uh, midwest house know? Midwest house over on rainy down around 75 and a half rainy in in downtown austin area Yes. You guys are going to be standing around there, uh, uh, having drinks and and cigars and and begging for money, stuff like that. Selling with, the, with the little cup, and you can with the change in yep. it. Absolutely. You have to yeah, put wow. some change in it in advance so that it jingles, and then people under they understand what it is, and they can they know this they have to knows. do it. He knows. So we've been we've all, I'm from Chicago. We've done this. So done this. Good. All right. Yes. All good. Larry's actually going to have a grinder and I'm going to be the monkey with the fez. Oh, I like on. that. Yes, I like that. Yes. I got to get one of those plan. fake mustaches too. Any one of those? Yes. I'll get one of those and we'll be set. All good. Yes. We will have every stereotype done. I love it. Perfect. It's, it's oh, because good. you guys believe in giving. It's yes. the reason. That's you believe reason. in giving. That's Absolutely. what it is. I believe that uh, Lauren, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, not Lauren, uh, Joanna, Joanna, who's the mastermind behind this, is going to be jumping in and joining you guys soon. But I just wanted to jump in, uh, help kill a little bit of time, and drop some of this knowledge so people know what they're looking we for. We were and killing it. We didn't have to kill any time. We were doing great. We were telling jokes about Tasha. We had the whole thing going on. Tasha is like a rare Pokemon, and Spike is right. That's why True. you can't you can't tweet her, you can't send her a message, you can't tag her in a photo on Facebook. Right. The only way to uh, to uh, um engage with Tasha is you have to be there. Easy. You have to be at the event where Tasha's at. It's the only way you can find her. There we go. Yeah. So it's it's, it's like Brian, a rare it's like a rare Pokemon. You, you got to plan for that and make sure you're in the right yeah. place at the right time. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate giving us all those details. I appreciate it. You take Thanks, care, guys. I'll catch you later. Have a South good one. By Southwest. I did love the hand signal thing. That was amazing. <laughs> that was awesome. That yes, was awesome. that was perfect. In case you didn't yes. know how to spell SSXW, here is the actual like. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. yes. In case you got confused, Dot it was amazing. Exactly. Com. Oh, you're doing the M and everything? Okay, I love yeah. that. That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, there is a mastermind behind this. It isn't Brian. Yes. He's taking credit for it, but he's wrong. It's not him. The actual exactly. mastermind behind this is an amazing person who actually is from the music industry, Joanna Jorgens. And I'm going to use my magic powers to bring her in right now. One, two, and boom. There she is. I have magic powers. It's amazing. <laughs> so, yes. Hey, y'all. Yes, I'm very happy that you got hey, here. Joanna. How are you? 
I am great. And you know what? I know they're, well, I guess I don't know, but um, most likely the people aren't listening, but I had a couple of guardian angels just, just help me out with an issue and incredibly well, glad grateful you're here. For, for strangers helping strangers, right? Which is what we're all about. I, I love about. that. And for those of you, ah! she's a uh, uh, part of Liberty Live. And if you want to see what's going on with Liberty yeah. Live, click over to libertylive.us and you will see what uh, Joanna is up to, what she's got going on. It would be great. So tell us, Joan, why in the world would you decide to try to you know, get this to happen at <laughs> South by Southwest when usually this is not a political thing in theory? I mean, well, I'm sorry. We, we don't usually think of it as maybe it's better. We don't usually think of it as a political thing at all. Yeah, for sure. So I, my background is in the entertainment business. Um, I was in TV. I worked for NBC for a while, got out of that one, um, went to work in grassroots music where there's mm -hmm. a lot more kind of liberty oriented people. Honestly, musicians are liberty oriented. And a lot of them perhaps don't realize that they are. Sure. Um, and I have been for about the last 10 years or so working with um, So Far Sounds, which is a pop-up concert company. And we, we create these great small intimate concerts for emerging musicians. And so I've been attending South by Southwest for many years now. Mm -hmm. And I always find Liberty type people there. Um, it, okay. it's, it's such an amazing networking event. And there are people just across the spectrum from all kinds of countries, all kinds of backgrounds. Yeah, but Joanna, hold on one second, right? The average person out there is going to assume, right? And obviously we're wrong here. So I'm asking you to correct us, but we're going to assume it's entertainment. They're all going to be socialists and progressives and not right. That's pinko communist. Yeah. Abs, they're all liberal pinko communists, right? Pinko Isn't that what yeah. people think that? Most of them do think they are, yes. And it's our job to, to let them know that that's not really what they are. Oh, uh, I, I love that. Look yeah, at you. Yeah, I, I, they do. I mean, I, I honestly, my work, you can go to my company on the I'm not NBC. Even fighting them. You're like, they're, they're all voting Democrat. And flipping them. Yeah. It's awesome. I, uh, the people I meet, they all think they are left wing. Mm -hmm. But then you get to know them and you get to know their hearts. And you talk to the people about when, you, when you're talking to the person. And what I, I like about the job that I've had is politics wasn't involved. We were just people mm. being right. together. And it doesn't matter if, you know, how someone worships, who someone loves, what color their skin is. We're, we're all coming together to support music and- So let me, it, let me touch this piece. Most musicians sure. that I know, even if they specialize and kind of focus on a certain type of music, right? They, they like folk music or they really like metal or they're a rapper or whatever the case may be. Most of them actually enjoy lots of other types of music also. It's rare to have a musician who goes, I only like metal, right? They tend to like what they like, obviously it's the time in, but- they, well, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> Sorry, he's a pain. What kind of dog ass. is that? It's a rat terrier mix. Uh, <laughs> ah, terrier. There, there we, go. we go. Okay, yeah, that terrier. makes sense. Yes. It, okay. It was my greyhound that ran into traffic just a few hours ago and caused. Is your greyhound okay? He is okay. Thank God. Oh, like wow. I said, thanks to yes, some guardian good. angels. Um, good. But anyway, good. How, <laughs> old, how old is your greyhound? She's six now. She's a retired an dog. Retired, yeah, okay. and a, a priest. Yeah. But anyway, long, long string of events you don't need All to, good. to know about. But everyone's okay Fine. now. And just good. everyone be nice to people, help people out, save save their pets when you can. <laughs> I like that. Um, so yeah. so my, my, my point was, so as a general rule, while someone may say, I prefer whatever is my type of music, they respect the other people's types of music. This seems yep. very libertarian to me, right? Oh gosh, I yes. like my stuff, but you do you. And I respect yep. you doing you. It seems like a natural connection. For sure, yeah. Honestly, I try to keep my my work life separate from my politics life. But you, since you said that, I'm just gonna have to give a plug to my company as much as it kills me to do that. The whole point of what we do with my company is to put, we put, honestly, surprise musicians together. People buy tickets not knowing who's coming. Mm. And we have three different mm. artists from totally different genres show up. So people don't know what they're coming to see. So we oh, may wow. have a, a country, you know, mm -hmm. country star along with a rapper and, you know, an experimental avant-garde, you know, 
creative. You just never know what's going to come in. We work really hard on diversity of music. And that's one of the things that brought me to Liberty. I've been doing that. I've been in the music industry longer than I've been in the Liberty world. And I, I got to know so many different kinds of people from so many different backgrounds. And nice. I realized from this, and our company's international too, we're in 400 cities around the world. People, we all just want the same thing. These yeah. people that don't know, if they think that they're far left, whatever, they're not, they're libertarian for the most part. Mm -hmm. I, they have good hearts yeah. and sure they want the government to help people because they don't realize that they don't we know can actually better. help yeah. better as individuals. But Absolutely. Honestly, yes. Ninety-nine like percent that. of the musicians I meet, they are all libertarian at heart. Yes. And so I have been slowly getting more involved in liberty organizations. And I having been involved with South by Southwest on the music side, I, when I met Lauren Postler, um, we started talking about, hey, we need to get together at a liberty panel. So she introduced me to you guys. She introduced me to a lot of people in the liberty world. And um, Lauren and I have got some amazing things kind of brewing. Um, we're nice. Liberty Alive, trying to work on getting that Liberty message outside. I mean, I go to Freedom Fest. I go to LP conventions, and that's great. I love it. But you go to LP chamber. conventions? Yeah, Why would you right. do that? Because I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, that's silly. Don't do that. I'm the other thing so is fine. <laughs> so you're a sadist as well. I am. So you yeah, also okay. hate yourself. Fine, it's yeah. fine. I'll see, it you, in Texas, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll <laughs> see yeah. you in Texas. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll see you in Texas. Yes. Uh, logic says Texas variety is. is the spice of life, and I agree yep. completely. I think that's yes. that's right on the money. I think a lot of people, you know, want to make sure, you know, that that that's that's part of their life, right? Shelly says my late husband was a musician. He clearly separated what he played for money and what he liked. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he knew what, what paid the bills but and the he still enjoyed anymore. other stuff. Oh, I, yeah, I, I like that. I know musicians that are like really devout Christian type guys that if you follow their personal little socials, they do their worship leaders in their churches on Sunday, but you see them during the week, you would never guess from the way they are in bars at night where they have to play for their mm. bands and their musicians. And you honestly never know. There yeah. we go. Judith says, uh, good to see you, Joanna. Hey, Judith. How are y'all? There we yeah. go. Yes. <laughs> Tim's we'll see her in Texas Spike. as well. Yes. So I, I have to know, ask Tim, will Spike be sporting the cowboy hat? <laughs> If someone brings a Stetson, I will put it on. That that I'll photo is <laughs> I'll a, bring a Stetson. Yeah, because what that's what happened. Some guy was there uh, and was singing Purple Rain, oddly enough. And we all sang Purple Rain together. It was quite a moment uh, that during the Q and A uh, and on my bus tour. And then uh, and then he gave, put it like a six hundred dollars Stetson on my hat. Well, if someone puts a six hundred dollars Stetson on your head, you wear the darn thing. Well, that's I don't what have I did. a six hundred dollar Stetson, but I can bring you a cowboy hat. We'll get some. Whatever, right? I'm, you know, listen. I didn't know it was six hundred dollars until he told me seven times, and that's the thing. <laughs> so I don't know how much hats cost, so you know, it might not have been. But he, uh, that no, you bring me the cowboy hat, I'll definitely wear. We should take you boot shopping too. There we sure. go. I like that. And Melissa, of course, he's you and says, "Spike who? That's Tasha's husband." Scarcity. So <laughs> Scarcity. Scarcity. That's the little thing. known fact. Little known fact. I'm actually more popular than Tasha, but you don't know it because of the scarcity. Mm. It's the scarcity. More attra and, That's and, and, the issue. and arguably, some have said more attractive. Is that right? Yes, I'm, that has definitely okay. been said by it. Okay. By Tasha. <laughs> My doctor, there we go. Yes, no. Tom said, Where did all this energy come from in the liberty movement? I love it. And I think that's a valid point, Tom. I think now, as odd as it sounds, I think now is our time. I think yep. this South by Southwest couldn't have come at a better time. I think more and more people are seeing it. I think more and more people are leaving the two the two party system. They're realizing something's wrong. They don't get it. And they realize that there's always distraction and a reason to not fix anything. I keep seeing yeah. it. I know Janet, Joanna, you're you're more of an outsider coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Than than you know, guys like us. Do you think the same thing or no? It, there, there's still a lot of resistance, obviously. Okay. People people are yeah. I I think it's it's very internal. Like I was saying, there are a lot of people, and again, musicians I meet, people that I meet that are willing to, to DM me and they send me these like secret messages. Like, I like what you post. Or if I see them in person, it's honestly, and moms at my, my, my kid's school are the same way that they'll kind of come up to me and very secretively like, I like your social media. Shh. Mm. I, they don't, and they tell me. 
like I, I, I'm a, I love the fact that you're speaking out. Um, I'm no hero, but I, I'm really just frustrated. I just have no. No, patience. you are a hero. Don't stop. You are a hero. Don't hero. you dare um, say that. But I, I hear that, like I said, from from mothers at my kids' school, from musicians that I meet. And so it, they keep me going. Sorry. Dog, they keep me going. There's the Liberty Dog. I, I keep Liberty pointing dog. that out. <laughs> there you go. Yes. When I think so, sometimes the posts don't get any likes, any responses, but then people tell me privately sure. they're listening. I'm like, okay, that's all I need. So Sarah says, I love the cure as well, Larry. Oh, that's yes. awesome to hear. Yes. We the need cure a, is one of my an emo favorite Sarah bands. picture too. It is. We need emo and my, Sarah, my emo face. Emo Larry. Yeah. There are things I like about the cure that people may, may think is kind of funny. Is that one of the things that's interesting about The Cure is they're actually decent poets, which is mm -hmm. many, many songs are not very poetic. Many of them are good songs, but they aren't poetic. Um, Cure is very poetic. And the guy, Robert Smith, who is the lead singer of The Cure, has been with his wife for now like 40 years. Mm -hmm. And they met when they were like 15 years old. And he is a popular rocker and they're still together. So there are some wow. things that are just personal that I like about them, Sarah. See, so... I would know that if I was a Cure fan, others wouldn't know that. So I've just, I've just given you my Cure street cred. If I, <laughs> if that was possible, I've just done that. So yes, I just thought it was an interesting comment that people do like different types of of music, and and it doesn't matter where you come from, it it's all different in that regard. So I just wanted to bring that piece. I thought it was kind of interesting. So yes, um, let me grab a couple of these. Uh, Jennifer says sharp spike. That is us. That is sharp Get it? and spike. Yeah. Sharp spike. By the way, I'm I'm just now realizing that my uh apparently my undershirt is uh the color of my green screen and uh that distracted me briefly. But yeah, sharp spike. That's that is funny. There was a, a <laughs> There was when Kim when Kim Ruff was running for the presidential nomination and I was running for VP, there was some talk that there would be a rough Cohen ticket and that our our slogan would be when the Cohen gets rough, the rough get Cohen. And Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Lost That's opportunity. That's another good one too. What could yes, have been? Absolutely. What could have been? Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking when um, uh, Big Knife was going to run, so it's going to be Sharp Big Knife. <laughs> oh, not bad either. So yes, that'd oh. be kind of cool. Yes, that would be cool. So, sharp Big Darius Knife. Darius says, "Mr. Sharp, given a low libertarian vote historically in the governor's race, you want, do you plan on winning a bigger party's nomination with Andrew Yang's help?" Well, this is a point that we're bringing up, right? And I think this goes right into our point. I'm. I've always said that. The Libertarian Party, the Liberty Movement, is the only real peace movement, is the only, you know, peace bridge builder, the peacemakers is us. We can create coalitions because you don't have to convert to be us. You can right. be liberal. You can be conservative. It doesn't really matter. As long as you don't want to use government force to make people like you, you're good. You can be super whatever you want to be. So I think, yes. And what I'm having is, I'm, I'm going to be having the, the forward line, the unite line, libertarian line. In New York State, for those who don't know, you can actually run on multiple lines. It's very special to New York State. So I can be listed three times on the ballot, my name, and all the votes together count. That's how that works in New York State. So I'm going to wind up trying to get three separate lines, and the forward party line is Andrew Yang's line. And what we all agree upon is what Spike and I were talking earlier. It's yep. the bro program. It is more ballot access, ranked choice voting, open primaries. And if we get those, right? Are oh, you doing the B and the R? You're not going to do the trying. R. It's not going to work. I apparently R's not going to work. No, I, <laughs> not going to work. But if we do those three, it allows every third party and every other party to grow and gives us more <laughs> choice. And I think that's the key. So thank you for that question, Darius. I, I appreciate that. But let me ask you then, Jordan, since, since I have you here again, do you feel – like there is more of an openness for people to vote third party or no? That's a tough one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it depends on, on the big orange guy because so many people have such visceral feelings about him. Yes. Um, and pro, pro and con. Yeah, pro exactly. Con. Absolutely. Yeah. Pro and con. Yes, you're I right. Mean, he, is, he is a force. Whether he's a good force or bad force, whatever you want to consider it, he is a force force and he makes people pay attention so you know in, in weird ways that's a good thing that people are, are paying a little bit more attention but um uh, yeah it, it's a tough call people it are either so one. completely against or so completely for that i think it's harder to get attention when absolutely when he's in the race. it was 
it was our biggest hurdle in 2020 mm -hmm. one, or, it's, or one of our biggest hurdles. I would talk to so many people who would say, I was considering voting libertarian for the first time, but I have to stop Trump. Or yeah, right. uh, I voted exactly. for Gary Johnson, but Donald Trump is our only hope. Uh, yep. and, and this is how cults of personality work. You, It's not just important to Trump that he have a bunch of people supporting him. It's important that the, the opposite opinion of him is at least as strong, if not stronger. And that allows him to create, again, the ultimate good cop, bad cop. Either he is the good guy that's going to stop the bad cop, who was really anyone they had put in, <laughs> Joe Biden, Harris, Hillary Clinton, really didn't matter. They could have put up anyone. Uh, or be the ultimate bad cop that keeps people voting for the Democrat and not splitting the vote there and not I having people vote honestly other, other believe well. more people are voting against someone than for someone. Almost yes. Always. Almost always. Yes. Yeah. 100% agree. Absolutely yeah. agree. Yes. So if you want to help out me, you can go to LarrySharp.com slash donate if you want to. Just saying, if somebody says, hey, I want to vote for somebody, I'm running. Do it. You can do that if you want to. Absolutely. LarrySharp.com slash donate. To help move this forward, of course, check out Spike Cohen, spikecohen.com. Check out Liberty Live at libertylive.us. And no matter what you do, so this grows, like and comment and share. It really does matter. It's it's critically important that we do this so that more people see what we're trying to achieve. So, yes. Um, and uh, Sarah also, says, uh, been there too, Larry. I didn't think you can get any cooler, you or Spike. Well, I like the cure, so I'm cooler. Anyway, keep going, Spike. I'm sorry. That's right. No, I was just going to say, if you <laughs> insist, if you're in New York and you insist on voting against someone, a vote mm -hmm. for Larry is a vote against everyone else that's on the ballot. So until we true. have ranked choice voting, until the program has been implemented, <laughs> then the uh, then a vote for Larry is a de facto vote against several other people. What a powerful way to show your opposition to all of that other stuff by voting for Larry Sharp. It's like having multiple votes because you're voting against so many people. All of those people. Yes. yes. It's like ranked Absolutely. choice voting, except you're voting for Larry one and everyone else last place. There we go. Well, you have a fan in Ryan. Ryan says, would Spike Cohen move to New York to fight the beast? So during now the he summer, wants you to move to New York. Yeah. Yes. During the summer? Absolutely. <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. I love that. There we go. That's, that's awesome. So, uh, Spike, do you feel, I mean, you're inside. Do you feel there are more people willing to vote third party now than before? Or no, is this is this just me feeling it because I'm running around and just I want to hear it? Or do you think it's true? It's just you. No, I no, I, I agree me. with you. It's literally you. only you think this. Yep. No, I, I, I do. I, I with a caveat, we, we see the polling and anecdotally we hear from people that more and more people are thinking third party. They're thinking even if they don't have a fully formed opinion about libertarianism or the Green Party or the Working Families Party or DSA or Constitution, they just are sick. They are Larry Sharp prior to finding the Libertarian Party. Ross Perot is going to save us. Ralph yep. Nader is going to save us. They that was just, me. They're, they, they recognize that it's a scam. They intuitively understand that they're being scammed by a two-headed monster that is working together to rob us all blind and, and, and make everything harder intentionally. But the gap, the, the, the gap that has to be crossed isn't that people are ready to vote third party. The polling shows that like three quarters of Americans would like to have a viable third party to vote for. But viable is the key word there. So they're mm -hmm. ready to do it. But they, because most people are not early adopters, they need to know that we can win first. And of course, right. maddeningly and paradoxically, we would have a much better shot of winning if they voted for us. But by showing how our ways work, by showing how our ideas work, by focusing on good quality, solid candidates like you, by focusing on local candidates who are showing in people's backyards with familiar faces what our ideas are about and what we want to do. We have people over time, they can see how that not only is voting libertarian not a waste of time or a waste of their vote, not only are we viable, but we're the only thing that they actually want to vote for. And that's the work that we're doing. That's the work I'm going to be doing with my group, You Are the Power. That's the work you're doing with your candidacy. That's the work Joanna is doing with Liberty Live. That's the work that we're all doing is to show how liberty works, where they are locally, mm -hmm in their state, from their state of mind, from their perspective and from their values, we're showing how our ideas work. We're not waiting for them to discover us. We're going to where they are, meeting them all the way where they are, not just part way, meeting them all the way where they are and walking them over to the same process that brought us here to libertarian. Yes. Agreed. Kyle says voting libertarian locally is amazing and beneficial to the community. Yes. And yes, 
Yeah. Dan says, I I too voted for Gary Johnson in 2016, but voted for Trump in 2020. My buyer's remorse was it's almost instantaneous. Example. I think a good libertarian candidate in 2024 should bring those memories to the forefront. Ooh, I like that idea. Yep. That's yep. nice. Yep. So look, before we wrap this up, I don't want to hold you guys too long. Is there anything that I've missed that we should be talking about? Something you want to bring up? Joanna, is there something you want to bring up that we haven't talked about? Have you guys talked about the 5% rule? Uh, no, tell ballot me. Access. No, why don't, no, why don't you talk about that? Yeah. Okay. So tell yeah, I, I'm again, like you said, I'm, I'm new to the Liberty movement, so I'm, I'm not completely versed in everything, but from what I understand, if a third party gets to 5% of the popular vote in their yeah. state, then mm. they generally get ballot access. And on the generally, national basis, yeah. there's some, yeah, generally there's always exceptions yeah. because of right. federalism um, yes. and some, federal funds for the party. And um, I, I definitely hear this from libertarians sometimes. We don't want federal funds and that's fine. It would be nice to be able to tell the feds, no, keep your millions of dollars. Yes, we don't exactly. Yes. Yeah. You know, I always tell them, I want that issue. I want that problem to have to be able to- I agree completely. Let's have that problem. Let's that's have a the great problem. problem to have. I, I want have that problem. I have found a yes. lot of people don't even understand why getting to 5%, even just 5% matters because they will tell yeah. me, yes, we think we can- Maybe you guys will get 5%, whatever, that, that isn't going to matter. But it really can make a difference. And it's something if we were to able either get the federal funding that would help us put toward it or be able to get some PR out of really putting our money where our mouth is and saying, no, Absolutely. we don't want it. Um, and the ballot excess, of course, is worth way more than its weight in gold. Um, Absolutely. I think the 5 percent getting people to understand why even just 5% matters. And 5% can maybe get, get us to that 15% for debate access. Yep. It's, I love it's that. It's really awesome. not, you're not trying to look at 51% straight up for that. It's great. Spike, am I missing anything? What should I What should I have talked about that I that I didn't? Yeah, I think there's something that never gets talked about, and I think it's really crucial that we do it now, and that's the five percent rule. No, I actually want to. I want to yeah, echo I off of something Joanna just said. <laughs> what a great idea. No, 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 no. no awesome. I want to. I want to echo. I want to echo off of something Joanna said, where she talked about the the matching funds that we would get from the taxpayer uh, if we got five percent. And there's been a lot of disagreement over what we should do if we're getting that situation. I think one of the two best options is either to refuse to accept it and actually do press conferences and everything else saying we won't accept this money because it's been stolen from taxpayers and it should, you know, taxpayers should not be funding political campaigns. The other thing we could do is we could use that money, but only use it for like charitable efforts and things like that. Nothing directly related to campaigning and saying, since this money was stolen from you, we chose to reclaim what we could get and give it back to those in the most need and show that. <laughs> our you know voluntarily using this money goes a lot further than it would have gone in some government program we could really do either of those things but again great problem to have how and, amazing uh, would like, that problem be to have <laughs> what what you know it, it, it's choosing whether to take the high ground and not take it or take another high ground and and give it back to those who are the most in need either way it's a great thing and it, the work that we're doing right now demonstrates that we are we are serious about leading in many ways, the, the three of us and many others that are working with us and on similar things, we're watering trees knowing that we might not enjoy their shade. Yeah. It might be quite a while before we have, hopefully not, but it might be more longer before we have libertarians elected office. I, I believe it'll be in our lifetimes, but regardless of what that is, regardless of what that is, we're doing the work that needs to be done. However long it takes for that to blossom, this work has to be done. We're doing it. And I, I couldn't be more grateful to be working with folks like you every day. That's amazing. Thank you. And I, let's I see do... Tasha say that since Tasha is so great. <laughs> That's true. Well, I'll bring her on tomorrow. We'll see what happens. I'm kidding. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so absolutely. And look, the thing that we have to realize is what our movement really is about. It's about letting people be happy. I say that all the time. Yeah. That's really what it's about, right? Some people don't want to be free right now. No worries. Just don't force me not to be free, right? Whatever. You do what you got to do. And libertarians get mad at me and say, how can someone choose to not be free? I joined the Marine Corps. I signed away my rights voluntarily. It's what I did. Yes. Some people As get married. You lose some of your rights when you get married too. So people make decisions. People check themselves into uh, rehab. So yep. you can choose to do these things if you want to. It's, it's up to you. And that's the key. Not to force people to be free but to allow people to be free and to let people do what they want to do. And if you want to figure out how to do that, head on over to libertarianism.com. They sponsor the show. Yes, a plug. 
They sponsor the show. Absolutely. Libertarianism.com. Click that link. Take those tests. It's cool. You get cool points and it's cool swag to buy. Things like, you know, no coercion, only persuasion, cool shirts like that. Nice stuff. And if you say, you know what? I don't want to do these tests. I like the swag. Then just buy the swag. Buy you, swag. you can just spend money and buy swag if you want buy to. It. I'm okay with that. Money. And you say, Larry, I love this stuff. I'm taking the test is all awesome. Great. Then take that link and share that link on all of your social media. Not half, all of your social media so that other people can go to libertarianism.com and learn what it's all about about that's a critical piece and as always i said every day i'll keep saying it like comment and share guys i want to say thank you so much for coming today i appreciate everything you've done joanna thank you so much spike you are the man thank you my friend and for everybody else who's watching i appreciate the time you gave us a little chunk of your evening and i will see you all very soon bye all